All right, we are building a new garden space. So I have about 2,500 square feet of existing garden and we're going to get the other 2,500 square feet tilled up and prepped for planting the season. All right, this is what we have. Need some weed whacking, some mulch to get these weeds down, but these beds have been planted. Everything with straw is planted. We're gonna go ahead and till that existing area. It was tilled last year, but I'm gonna do it again this year. Lay down mulch. This is the new garden space. So, as you can see, my husband's already started tilling. We had a burn last week. This is gonna all be a new garden. There's a lot of controversy around tilling and for good reason. Tilling disrupts the mycelial network, the thread-like fungal hairs that run through the top six inches of soil. This living web known as the mycelium does more than just sit in the dirt. It transports nutrients and water and even allows plants and microbes to communicate. In fact, around 90% of plants have a symbiotic relationship with mycorrhizal fungi. It's how they've evolved to thrive. So why did I till? Well, when it comes to building a brand new garden space, options are limited if you're working with time constraints. I thought about bringing in pigs to break the ground, but with my existing garden already planted, I wasn't willing to risk them escaping and causing chaos. I considered Hugo culture too, but with an injury and limited time this season, I decided to till just this once. This will be the first and last time I use a tiller in this garden. Beyond the fungal network, tilling can also spread weeds and, depending on your soil type, actually contribute to compaction. Luckily, my soil was relatively soft and rich in organic matter, although, as you can see, it was full of rocks I had to dig out. Next week, I'll be adding several yards of single-ingredient wood chip compost and sowing a blend of cover crops like buckwheat, daikon radish, sweet alyssum, sunflowers, and zinnias. This space will be home to pumpkins, corn, and cannabis. And I'll also be inoculating with wine cap mushrooms and applying immunity to boost plant hormones and stimulate fungal regrowth. Sometimes we make compromises in the garden to meet the moment, but my focus now is to rebuild what was disturbed and set this soil up for decades of no-till success. If you're enjoying this garden journey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Next week, I'll be diving into different compost options and the importance of organic matter in your soil because it plays a huge role in nutrient availability. If you want to dig deeper into that topic, check out my recent article on the Seedsman blog all about unlocking nutrients in soil. And a huge shout out to Seedsman Seed Bank for sponsoring this year's Blaze Project, a citizen science initiative like no other there's still time to sign up. Use code blaze for 10% off and grab some of this season's featured strains like strawberry banana grape and purple Oreos. And if you haven't heard it yet, be sure to listen to my episode with Tom, the founder of Seedsman, where we unpack all the details about this groundbreaking project.